What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now today we finish up not only our talks on the Drake Warden Ranger, but also just the Ranger in general, and... While this class was a little bit shorter of a discussion than most of the others, I think it is still very much worth talking about and worth mentioning. I know that there are a lot of Ranger fans out there and a lot of Drake Warden fans specifically. There has been a really great response to uh, just the subclass ranking video, so I really appreciate all of you for, for doing that. Uh, it's, been, it's been really awesome getting a lot more interaction and that kind of thing, so thank you all so much for that. But today we're gonna be building one and I am excited to show you what I have come up with today. One of the more simple builds that I have done, but still nonetheless gonna be a lot of fun. So I am excited to show you that. Before we do that though, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are not subscribed, so please tell me one of those people, help us to reach our goal of what is now 3,600 by the end of this year. I think we can do it. We got a couple of weeks left, but we can do it. I just need your help in order to get there. So make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Another great way to support the channel, of course, would be to become a member. By clicking that join button down below, you can become a member and just at the lowest tier, you can become a member and get access to all of my build write-ups. So just today's is going to be up there. Of course, all of my previous are going to be up there as well, as well as all of my variety builds, subclass builds, you name it, it's there. All my subclass fixes, they're there. Everything's there, so make sure to check that out, of course. And there's also the silver and gold tiers as well if you would like to support a little bit more. And there are some even better perks on there as well. So make sure to consider that. One last little announcement before I get started. Sorry, I know this is taking forever, but this is the last time that I will be in this office. Um, we are moving, it is, it is happening. And so come next time that we post on the channel, I will be in a different office space. So. I thank you so much for your support as I have lived here. It's been a few years, but uh, we are moving on and getting a new office space to record and make videos with. So in that time, we, we don't move really until the middle of January. And so I was hoping to start videos back at the beginning of January, but the closing is a little bit later. And so we won't be posting any videos probably for about a month, maybe a month and a half. Uh, not because I don't want to, but because the computer will not be set up and I may not have internet. So uh, I will not be posting really anything until then. Um, UNPL season four will be starting somewhat soon. Um, I'm not sure how my recording schedule is going to go with that. Probably no face cam for a while. Uh, and I'm probably gonna be hot spotting my uh, switch with my phone and that kind of thing. It, it just, it's going to be rough for a few weeks. Uh, but I thank you all so much for your patience. But as soon as I can start posting again, we will be starting with Rogue and we will be going from there. So thank you all for your patience. Let's jump in. So the Drake Warden, right? One of the community's favorite subclasses, whether you rank it highly or not. I did find this to be quite polarizing. Um, I saw a lot of people saying this is a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, and there are others that's like, it's a six at best, right? So I think a lot of people have differing opinions on this subclass. Um, do I stand by my nine? Yeah, I, I do. I, I But I can also see the arguments for it, for it being different just because of how it does choose to buff your, your animal companion or your dragon companion rather over you, right? I can see that. But I think that when you think about this from a team building perspective in that you aren't necessarily just in it for yourself. You are there as a team member. I think that this offers a lot of really good stuff. And so I think it's really cool. So today I'm going to be building something different from what I've done in my entire Ranger series. I haven't built a strength based Ranger at all so far. And so I wanted to go ahead and jump back and actually do that for you today. I think that this is the perfect time to do so. And so we're gonna be building a strength based mounted uh, Ranger because we of course can ride our, ride our dragon. So we are going to do just that. So let's see what I've got in store for today. So starting off, as always, we have our race and we are going to be taking something I haven't taken in a really long time. Uh, I love this race. I think you all love this race and thematically it is questionable, uh, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're going with Kobold today. We are a little dragon who's going to have a pet dragon. 
that is going to end up being much, much larger than us by the end of this build. Uh, this is a lot of fun, being a dragon that has a dragon pet. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, thematically it's interesting, it's, it's questionable, I guess. Um, but mechanically it works pretty decently. I, I really like this thing, especially because of the Draconic Cry. Draconic Cry, of course, is a nice little bonus action that you can take. Yes, you're taking a break from, from giving uh, a, an attack or, or a command even to your dragon, but it's kind of worth it because then every ally, including the dragon, will get advantage on future attacks, which is really good. Uh, and that's really the main the main draw for this. It's it's not just for you, but it's also for your dragon. And so this makes your dragon that much more useful, right? We also get Draconic Sorcery here, which gives us a free cantrip. And we're going to take Booming Blade because why would we not? Booming Blade is such a nice cantrip. And of course, we get to use Wisdom instead of what it would normally be. And so that's really cool as well. I love that spell. I think it works really well here and uh, it's just going to get better as we go. Next up, of course, we have our stats. And of course, if you're using regular standard array, point by some other system, whatever it happens to be, your stats will probably look different than mine, and that's totally fine. Just go in the order that I go from highest to lowest and just match up accordingly. So for our top stat, we're going to go with our strength. Like I said, we're going to be strength based this time around. Next up is going to be wisdom for all those spells, spell save DC, all that good stuff. We'll, we'll get to why that's important later. Next, dexterity, because we have to have a 13 in dexterity in order to be a ranger. Then constitution. I hate having it so low, but just kind of how it worked out. Then charisma intelligence doesn't matter. It can be really whatever you want. Per the new rules in the Mordenkainen presents Monsters of the Multiverse, whatever, uh, you get a plus two and a plus one or three plus ones. I'm going to go with the plus two plus one option this time around just because of some things I'm going to mess around with a little bit later. So I'm going to leave a couple of odd numbers and then and then shore those up as we go. So it's going to give me a 19 strength and a 14 dexterity. I'm going to leave wisdom odd for now and uh, we'll we'll fix that a little bit later. I want that plus two to dexterity for now because with our equipment, we're gonna be taking medium armor. I know we normally take the, the light armor option because normally it's better, but we're gonna be working ourselves up and, and using a little bit of heavier armor this time around because our dexterity isn't as good. Um, I would also grab a long sword or other weapon that uh, has the versatile property. I, I like versatile weapons in this case. Um, we're gonna be melee because we're gonna be mounted. And one thing about this build is that this subclass really works both ranged and melee. And so it, it really can work both ways if you'd rather go dex and, and do the bow and that kind of thing. More power to you. I just wanted to give a strength based option because I really hadn't done that in my series and I wanted to make sure that I did it at least once. And of course, if you want a shield, you can use it. It's completely optional. There's nothing about this build that specifically needs a shield. Um, so if you want it or, or if you want to do it sometimes when you're doing somatic components on spells, you can put it away. That's fine. It's really whatever you want to do. So it's really up to you. So let's actually start taking some levels. And at level one, we're going to be a ranger. Now, listen, I know that I have a tendency a lot and I get comments about this a lot of saying, you know, this is a ranger build and then I go with something different or or even I'll go, you know, this is a, a specific subclass and I'll go 11 levels and then divert for the other nine. I get it. I understand. But listen, this subclass, mechanically speaking, it's tough because mechanically speaking, it's kind of OK to split off at level 11. But at the same time, if I'm going to be basically the, the main character of how to train your dragon, I want to have my big boy dragon. So I need to take at least 15 levels to make this subclass worth it. And I need those to be the first 15 levels because I want that before I can do anything else. I want my big boy large dragon before I do anything else. So my first 15 levels are locked in at Ranger. I don't care. Last five, we'll talk about it. But so that's what we're going to do. The first 15 levels are Ranger and, and there's there's no alternative, at least for me. You can let me know in the comments below how you would do your first 15 levels, but uh, this is how I would do it personally. So Ranger 1, we of course get Favored Foe and Deft Explorer, which gives us Canny at this level. Like I always say, Favored Foe is bad. Canny is really good. Just take a skill that you are already proficient in and make it even better. Uh, stealth might be an option for you just because you're clanking around in the armor, so that may uh, may help you there in, in kind of negating that, but you're welcome to do whatever it is you want to do. Level two, we are still Ranger and we are gonna get a fighting style. Now I'll give you two options here. It's really whatever you want. 
Um, dueling is one option. Of course, this is going to only work when you're using a weapon in one hand. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, of course, because we are a kobold, we are small, so we can't take any two-handed or we can't take any heavy weapons rather, uh, or else we are just shooting ourselves in the foot there. Um, so we really are going to want to use a weapon that we can use in one hand. I like versatile because you can hold it with two hands if you want to, but then you lose out on dueling but mathematically, they're pretty close. So it's really up to you if you want to take that or not. Um, the alternative is the defense fighting style. Defense is never a bad option. So if you don't want to bother with the dueling and, and worrying about whether or not you get the plus two to damage, just take defense. It's easy, plus one AC, not an issue there. Next up, of course, we get spell casting and we get the classics of absorb elements, cure wounds, Hunter's Mark, Searing Smite. I normally don't recommend Searing Smite, but you know, we're a melee character. You might as well at least think about it. In most cases though, our bonus action is going to be accounted for after we set up Hunter's Mark. Then we're pretty much just gonna be telling our dragon to do its thing. So you probably won't be using Searing Smite all that much. Just wanted to mention it if for some reason your dragon is down at the time and, and you would rather use a first level spell slot on this. I'd probably use your first level spell slot on getting your dragon back, but that's just me. So it's really up to you. Uh, but then at third level, we get primal awareness. We of course get our draconic gift and our Drake companion, which is great. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Drake companion because I didn't mention this on Tuesday, but I wanted to mention it now. It is a first level spell slot to bring this thing back, right? It's also a first level spell slot to cast cure wounds. Those are not equal amounts of HP. Um, so the way that I would play this is I would pretty much never heal your Drake Companion. I would rather let it die and use the first level spell slot to get it back at full health rather than using Cure Wounds to top it off, right? It has its own hit dice. So if you take a short rest, it can heal itself. So I would rather do that if you've got a bard, then you've got Song of Rest in there helping out. Like, I I wouldn't really worry about healing it. I would just let it die and bring it back. So if that's just me. You know, if you if you feel differently, let me know. But I, I don't know. I just don't think it's as worth it. But that's just me. Whatever. At Ranger 4, we, of course, get our first ASI or feat. And we are going to go with the Slasher feat. This, of course, is going to boost our strength. And of course, we get a bonus to our crits with slashing weapons. We can reduce people's speed, which is great, especially once we start riding our dragon. We're going to have that 40 foot speed effectively. And that's really, really nice. Uh, so we can really catch about anything, especially if we are reducing speed, uh, sometimes even if they dash, which is really cool. So love that. Ranger five, extra attack, always a great thing. And second level spells, I would take things like aid, enhance ability, lesser restoration, pass without trace, that's a big one because of course we're clanking around all the time. And even summon beast for a secondary summon that you've got out, uh, that can definitely be nice for having even more friends on the battlefield. Ranger six, we of course get deft explore, which gives us roving at this level. That gives us a bonus to our movement speed, which we probably aren't gonna be using all that much because at level seven, we get bond of fang and scale and this is what allows us to ride our dragon it is now a medium-sized creature which we could have rode anyway because of how the rules work in this subclass but it's fine we can ride it now because it is a medium size this also of course boosts damage it gives us a resistance it's really nice it gives us a lot of really nice features in there uh so that's really cool at ranger eight we get one other asi or feat here just in time for us to be riding around our dragon, we can now take Mounted Combatant. Now, I will admit, Mounted Combatant is not as good on this build as it would be normally. Normally, mounts are sized large at this time, right? You're looking at a war horse or maybe even an axe beak or something like that. Uh, you're, you're looking at things that are typically large so that medium-sized creatures can ride them, right? This is a medium sized creature. So the advantage that you would get out of mounted combatant is only going to work if something is small or tiny. So it is a little restrictive in that way where a normal mount will be large. And this isn't going to be fixed until we get perfected bond at level 15. So just know, yes, it's not as good as normal, but the ability to change the targeting and basically giving evasion on the deck saves 
that's still worth it to me. And so that's why I went with it this way. Uh, if you'd rather do something else, by all means, I totally understand, but that is what we are going to do despite the drawbacks that are associated. Ranger nine, we don't get any features, but we do get third level spells and a Shardalon stride, right? We gotta take a Shardalon stride because it is dragon based and it is a really nice movement option. Uh, I love this spell. It, it's, I think it's a lot of people's favorite ever since it came out. Um, I. I don't see a reason why we wouldn't take it. Revivify and then Summon Fae. There's another Summon spell. Again, having extra things on the field are always going to be nice. And Summon Fae has, is a really potent uh, helper for you in combat. Ranger 10, we get another feature with Deft Explorer and that is Tireless, which helps with like exhaustion and that kind of thing. It'll come up every now and then, uh, but nothing too crazy. And then Nature's Veil gives us some limited invisibility. Not too bad, I like it, it's pretty decent. It's not gonna make a huge difference when you know we're on our dragon, people are gonna be able to figure out exactly where we are if we're sitting on our dragon, but it can be useful for sure as long as your dragon is uh, not causing a huge uh, amount of noise or distraction, that kind of thing. At level 11, we are going to get Drake's Breath, and this is pretty cool. Gives us the ability to spit that 30 foot cone either from us or from our dragon, so if you're on your dragon, that's great. If you're split apart, you can fire it from either spot, which is pretty cool. Uh, it deals a lot of damage it's a fireball pretty much um so you know it, it is late for us to be getting it at level 11 but i mean you know it is what it is we got third level spells two levels earlier um so yeah but you know it does get buffed at level 15 though to where it does 10 d6 which makes it even more worth a th third level spell slot if we need to do it again so don't be shy with using this feature it's pretty good damage uh, and of course choosing whichever damage type you want that makes it even more useful at ranger 12 we get one more asi or feet here and i'm going to go with fey touched this not only is going to buff up our wisdom to get that off of an odd number but it also gives us misty step which is a great get out of jail free card if we need it if we get stuck with a melee character that we can't handle um, then that allows us to get out of there and we also of course silvery barbs gets put to on our list and uh yeah you knew that i had to do that it's it's just too good it's too good not to i gotta put silvery barbs on here it's just an amazing spell is it broken eh, maybe but i still like it and so as long as it's allowed at your table i would take it at ranger 13 we get no features but we do get fourth level spells i would take things like dominate beast freedom of movement and another summon spell summon elemental uh is it flavorful? Eh, not really, but having a, a feature that gives you another companion is always gonna be a good thing, just like at each of our previous spell levels. So if you want it, take it. If you don't like it, that's fine. It's really whatever you wanna do there. Ranger 14, we get Vanish. Eh, it's, it's fine. Rain, rogues have been doing this since level two, so eh, who cares? Then Ranger 15, Perfected Bond. We finally got the big boy, the biggest of dragons at size large there. Um, of course, boosting our damage that we're dealing as well. Uh, just a really cool feature. It, it's really cool what you can do with this. And of course, now you can say that you did learn how to train your dragon. Your dragon is now fully trained, which is really cool. So at this point, we of course have a few ways that we can go. We can go straight to 20 in Ranger, and that makes complete sense to me. I get it. But mechanically speaking, I don't feel that the, the late game features of Ranger are really all that game changing, especially for this subclass. And so I think it'd be worth it to actually multi-class at this point. Of course, 95% of people who play this game are never going to get to this point. So this is completely irrelevant for most people. But of course, I'm here to give the theoretical character that makes it to level 20. If you ever do a level 20 one shot, which I don't recommend, but if you want to go for it, you know, uh, this gives you a way to, you know, have have a completed build. So by all means, go for it. We're gonna take a cleric dip here, and by dip, I mean the rest of the way. Uh, cleric is a really nice complementary uh, class here. Of course, there are others, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but this this works really well, and there are several subclasses that work nicely here. Of course, at level one, we're gonna have to pick which one we want, and I'm going to go with the Twilight Cleric. Thematically, it, it's, it's may, it might be a little difficult to, to justify it, but, Mechanically speaking, it works really well. So you could come up with some kind of story about uh, why the Twilight Cleric uh, works really well with this. 
let me know down below. But we get spell casting, and uh, this gives us things like the Guidance Cantrip, Spare the Dying, Toll the Dead, which is a really great cantrip because that scales on our overall level. So that's dealing some massive damage, which is huge. Uh, and of course, we get things like Fairy Fire and Sleep for free. We can take Bless, Healing Word, Inflict Wounds, all that good stuff. That's really, really cool. We also get some bonus proficiencies now, so we can actually wear heavy armor at this point, which is really cool. I would definitely do that. Uh, so at this point, I would get the best heavy armor that you possibly can now that you're level 16. Hopefully you are rich and famous and you can get some amazing armor, so do that. Uh, we get Eyes of Night, which is just amazing dark vision, which we can share with our dragon, which is great, and Vigilant Blessing, which is really cool. So we now get advantage on our initiative rolls because our dexterity isn't that great, so this helps it out a lot, which is really, really nice. At Cleric 2, we of course get Channel Divinity, which gives us three options. Turn Undead, eh, you're probably not using that at this level, like, ever, because the CR is too low. Uh, but Harness Divine Power and Twilight Sanctuary are both great, so either one of those is fine. If you don't know what either of those do, up in the icard above, I will put my Twilight Cleric video for you to check out. It's an awesome subclass, and this feature is, of course, really, really good. Very much worth your channel divinity usage. At Cleric 3, we don't get any features, but we get second level spells. We get Moonbeam and Sea Invisibility for free. Eh, I probably wouldn't really use those, uh, but hold person, that's not bad. Hold person is pretty nice because then you can hold uh, your person in place if you are fighting a humanoid, and then your dragon can go nuts. So that's pretty cool. Cleric 4, we of course get one more ASIR feat, our last one for the build. I'd probably just bump my wisdom here. I would just make sure that that spellcasting modifier is as high as possible. So that's probably what I would do. There are plenty of other options, which we'll talk about in the honorable mentions. And finally, level 20, Cleric 5. No features, but we do get third level spells. And this is really cool. We get some really good stuff. Aura Vitality, not bad. And we also get Liaman's Tiny Hut, also not bad. Hopefully your wizard has had that since level five. But if not, then here at level 20, you can make your little your little hut and, and do your thing. Uh, but we also get things like Mass Healing Word and then either Spirit Guardians or Spirit Shroud. Both of those I really like for this melee character. And so I think it works really well as a capstone to get something like that, which of course we can upcast if we want to, which is a really cool way to end it off. So what do you think of this build? Let me know down below. I really like it because you get a dragon companion. What's cooler than that, right? That's that's just so fun. And you get to ride it into battle and just smack people with a sword or whatever weapon you happen to choose. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really, really like this. So let's take a look at some honorable mentions that I have here. As far as other classes that I would consider going into, or subclasses in this first one, uh, Peace Cleric. Peace Cleric is insanely good. I would probably only take the one level and then maybe go with like Rogue after that. Uh, but this thing is really, really good because you get your Balm of Peace, right? This allows you to basically have Bless on steroids for creatures around you. And of course, you and your dragon are going to be two of them. And that is just really, really great, right? That that little D4 makes a huge difference at all levels. It makes a huge difference. And so I absolutely love that. We also have things like the Ascendant Dragon Monk. I I don't know. I think it's fun to have both the dragon subclasses together. All the multi-classing lines up as far as have it, what stats you need to have at certain numbers. All of it's really cool. So thematically, it's cool. And mechanically, it works. Just a really cool option there, definitely uh, consider that. As far as feats go, I really like the piercer, crusher, slasher combo there, right? So I would take one of the other two if I wasn't taking a slashing weapon. All of them are nice here. You know, crusher is great for being able to push people back. Um, so that's never gonna be one that I'm gonna, you know, not consider, I, I really like it. Of course, Warcaster is another great one just for the somatic components alone. At that point, I definitely would take a shield. Um, it also allows us to use the booming blade on opportunity attacks, which I definitely would use at higher levels. Um, so that's a really great option. I wanted to fit that in. And definitely it could go there at Cleric 4 if you wanted to, uh, but I don't know, it's, it's really up to you on that one. And finally for other races, to be honest with you, there's not really a specific race that's like the best here, right? The Aladrin of course comes to mind, but I like the Aladrin just a ton anyway. It's one of my favorite races. Um, just, the, just the seasonal type of, of thing is really cool. You can change your dragon to like match the season that you're in, which I think could be really interesting. Of course, this 
this build would love elven accuracy and that kind of thing as well if you want to do something with a bow uh there, there's plenty of options there as far as what's viable i also would consider something like a centaur one because it's funny two because it actually mechanically isn't bad the centaur is a really cool race um and it's underutilized just because it's kind of weird uh but it's interesting and I, I kind of like it. So there's also the Seder, which again is one that a lot of people kind of tend to ignore, especially on like a ranger type of thing. Most people go with that for like a bard and that kind of thing, which makes sense. But I think the Seder actually could work here pretty decently. So definitely consider that. So let me know what you thought down below, of course. We're taking a break. After this, it will be a while before I post any more videos, at least D&D related. I'm gonna try to get one more video out before the end of the year so be looking forward to that um i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm actually working with someone who's going to edit it for me so that it'll actually be a little bit more more fancy and, and look nicer uh so that's going to be really cool so be looking forward to that and then we'll start on rogue sometime next year so if i don't see you before then i hope that you all have a merry christmas i hope you have a happy new year and we will see you whenever we see you until then stay safe out there stay healthy We'll see you later. Bye-bye.